So students, today I'm going to show you how to solve three problems based on R and S isomers and how to calculate the amounts of R and S isomers in a mixture if you know the specific rotation of um, a compound and uh, have an observed specific rotation of a mixture. So we're going to solve questions 12, 13 and 14 from the tutorial. So we're going to start off by looking at a sample of enantiomerically pure S2 bromobutane. And this has a specific rotation of 30.0 degrees. Now it's important to note that if this is the S plus isomer, then the other isomer in the mixture must be the R minus isomer. And if you have a sample containing two isomers that have an observed specific rotation of 23.1 degrees, it means that you have an enantiomeric excess of the S plus isomer. So let's look at the options that you have. The R plus isomer is in excess. We do not have an R plus isomer existing in this mixture. The S plus isomer is in excess, and that is what you observe. So the answer must be B. But let's quickly look at the other two options. The R minus isomer is in excess. And you can see that the R minus isomer is not in excess. If it were in excess, then the uh, optical rotation would be negative. But the fact that it's positive, it means that the S plus isomer is in excess. And the other option is the S minus isomer, which does not exist. So the fact that we have a positive optical rotation um, in a sample that has where the specific rotation is plus 30 degrees, it means that the enantiomeric excess is the S plus isomer. Going on to question number 13, we see how we can use some values in uh, examples like these. And here we have an enantiomerically pure sample of S plus 2 hydroxybutane having a specific rotation of 32.8 degrees. And then we have a 100 gram sample of a mixture of isomers with an observed specific rotation of 8.2 degrees. And you can see that we have a positive sign, just like a positive sign here, which means that the S plus isomer must be in excess, which means that we have the opposite the R minus isomer also in the mixture. Now, the fact that the 100 gram sample has an observed specific rotation of 8.2 degrees, we can calculate an enantiomeric excess. And we can donate enantiomeric excess as EE. And we can see that if we take the 8.2 degrees and divide it, by the 32.8 degrees. 8.2 is a quarter of 32.8 and we end up with 0 0.25 or 25%. Which means that 25% of the 100 gram sample is in excess and that must be the S plus. So we have 25 grams, because 25% of a 100 gram sample is 25 grams. This means that the racemic mixture, which contains 50-50 portions of R and S, is 75 grams. Therefore, half of that must be the S isomer, so 30 uh, what, 75 divided by 2, 37.5 grams must be added to this 25 grams to get the total number of S plus and the R minus isomer just has 37.5 grams. So if I add these two up, I end up with 62.5 grams of S plus isomer 
and 37.5 grams of R minus isomer. And now I go to my options A, B, C, and D and see which matches best to what I've just put down on paper. The mixture contains 32.8 grams of the S isomer and 67.2 grams of the R isomer. That's not it. The mixture contains 87.5 grams of the S isomer and 12.5 grams of the R isomer. It's not it. The mixture contains 12.5 grams of the S isomer and 87.5 grams of the R isomer. No. The mixture contains 62.5 grams of the S isomer. That's what I had. And 37.5 grams of the R isomer. That's what I had. So the answer must be D. In the next example, we have a specific rotation of a pure substance being 1.68 degrees. And then the question says, what is the specific rotation of a mixture containing 75% of this isomer and 25% of the minus isomer? So in this case, if I had two samples, assume one is R, and the other is S. The S must be minus. So I assume that this was the S. And let's assume that this was plus. So R plus and S minus. And I have 25% of that. And 75% of that. Which means that the enantiomeric excess, the excess of R, must be 50% since 25% would combine with that 25% and give you a racemate. So I'm taking this 25% here and 25% out of there to make the racemate and that's how I end up with my 50% enantiomeric excess. And in order to get a 50% enantiomeric excess then I would need to divide my 1.68 divided by 2 in order to give me half and 1.68 divided by 2 is 0 0.84 so the answer here would be C which is 0 0.84 Right, so that's just how you could use um, enantiomeric excesses to work out amounts of substances for problems like these.